Yeah, bonjour, Kotuntak. I will present you today the, uh, what we name the kit, but it's the EIT raw materials to make it more clear. Um, and uh, we will have some time, I suppose, also for, for questions. Um, what's, what's, uh, what is the EIT? Uh, you, you probably know some of you because I discussed this with some of you during the coffee break. It's the European Institute for Innovation and Technology, and uh, what is the aim of this uh, EIT is to bring together the business on one side, the research and technology on the other side, and the higher education, and also to build up some uh, real entrepreneurship spirit. <coughs> there are still some uh, existing uh, Kiko EIT. Um, you have the three first one, which are energy, uh, climate, and, uh, and digital. And we had a nice meeting two weeks ago here at this place, uh, just sharing our, our knowledge and, and all the information about it. And um, we are in the second wave. It's uh, the kick uh, EIT raw materials in the same as the health kick. And uh, we started, in fact, uh, end of uh, yeah, mid of December uh, 2015 and uh, 14, sorry. And we had so last year to, to build up uh, the, this kick, and I will show you the, the way we, we did it. What is the purpose of this, uh, of this EIT raw material? It's uh, in some way to, to bridge the gap. Uh, there is a gap uh, between, on one side, uh, national funding, European funding, and, uh, and the way to put some new services or some new products on the market. And we can do it uh, with two different uh, processes. We can help uh, SMEs or or big players uh, to, to support them into the transfer of technology and creating some new services or some new products. But we can also help uh, new entrepreneurs uh, to build up some startups and some, some spin off and uh, to help them to go to the market. And that's it, it's, uh, it's the aim of the EIT raw materials it's to, to focus on this. Uh, Tech transfer it can be through industry, to companies, to SMEs, but also to startups in the uh, field of raw materials and materials. <coughs> um, what is a kick activity? I will I will show you what is a kick activity. But just to make it very short, um, a member has to 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 bring some uh, what we name some uh, some. Uh, some kick complementary activities, so he has to make the proof that he has already invested in uh, some program on education, on technology, on, on research, and then uh, the EIT will provide him some support. Uh, the ratio, the general ratio is you bring 75% uh, and EIT will bring you 25%, but uh, this will be financed at 100%. Uh, and so you can end with, uh, with key activities in, in, in different fields. Uh, what are the challenges of this EIT raw materials? Uh, there are challenges, there are opportunities. If we look to the, uh, the challenges, yes, there is a rapidly increasing of different uh, demand, of different demand and diverse demand in the, in the raw materials and materials. Uh, there is a decrease on one other side on the quality of the resources. Uh, you have ecosystems which are changing uh, because uh, players are changing, because also the technology are changing. Uh, there is an opportunity of having uh, unused material flows and stocks. And what we want to bring uh, with this large consortium, which is uh, uh, over 100 members today, is to uh, have a real desiloing of the, of the practices and to bring people together. It means when you are thinking about uh, manufacturing a new materials or, 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 or new, a new process or a new, a new product, you have to think about uh, the way you can recycle it, you, you, the, the way you can bring it into the circular economy. So it's really this point which is important in this community, I remember you that kick is uh, the C is for community, is to bring people together and, and sing them, I mean, not like a silo, but just like a very transverse way. 
So, our mission, we have three missions. It's uh, first uh, to secure the raw material supply. Uh, the other one is to design some uh, new solution. And I speak about already concerning the, the circular economy uh, to have this uh, closing material loops. That's very important. And we have three goals is to, to create a, a new game-changing business in the, in the field of raw material. Uh, it is also to, to boost the existing raw material sectors by bringing some new services, uh, some new products on the market, and to, have a, 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 to achieve a real uh, paradigm shift in the raw material education as well, and bringing some uh, entrepreneurial spirit uh, to the education. We are focused on uh, four main sectors today, markets, I would say. Uh, the first one is uh, mobility, of course. Uh, you can think about battery. Uh, you can think about um, lightweight in mobility. Of course, also about machinery and equipment, because you, you use them, of course, for example, for mining, exploration. We are also uh, focused on uh, energy supply, uh, with all the new alternative energies you can find. And uh, at last but not least, we will also focus on ICT. I told you we are uh, probably the largest consortium on raw materials on material. Uh, it's today 115 partners who are associated and who are working together since about one year. Uh, we have partners coming from 22 countries in Europe. Uh, we cover the full value chain of the uh, raw materials and materials from exploration uh, to the recycling and circular economy. <coughs> and uh, we are organized with uh, the headquarter, which is in Berlin. And we have six co-location centers, which are uh, one in Finland, it's a Baltic CLC, we name it. One in Lulea, it's uh, in, in Sweden, uh, it's named the Northern CLC. Uh, we have the Eastern CLC, which is in Poland. The Western CLC, which is in Leuven. The Southern CLC, which is in Italy, and which um, is of the territory of uh, Spain and uh, Italy. And we have uh, Central CLC, which is based in Metz, and I will tell you a little bit more why it's in Metz. And we are covering uh, a part of Germany and uh, uh, totally uh, the, the French territory. We have uh, today four types of partners. Um, the most important are the co-partners and the associate partners. Uh, you can see that uh, the co-partners, they are making the decision uh, and they are bidding up the strategy, not only on the headquarter level, but also on the central CLC or CLC level, of course. And uh, then they can participate in a limited number of activities, and they have uh, full access to the raw material network. This is uh, the top level, I would say, category. Then you have a second category, we name it the associate. Uh, they can make a, a very active contribution as well to the development of several kick, uh, and they have a kind of co-decision making power at the CLC level. These are the mo two most important categories which are associated today to the to the CLC. And then we have what we name the task partners. Um, you can be task partners if you are not still already sorry partners of the kick. Uh, if you are interested in, uh, in joining a, a project on education, or on, uh, on, uh, on upscaling and on network of infrastructure, for example, uh, you can join uh, one of these associate or co-partners and you can be a task partner. And I will show you uh, what kind of benefit you have, can have or what kind of support you can have by being a task partner. And then we have uh, the support partners that are mainly uh, organization, uh, NGOs, public bodies. We have, for example, in France, uh, Pôle de Compétitivité, like an example. And uh, this shows you very nice uh, so, so four different categories. But once again, 
uh, today the, the most important and most contributing partners are the co-partners and the associate partners at, this, at the CLC level, of course. Um, at a glance, um, what can we, what can, what, 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 what do we ask, and what can you have being a map partner? Um, if you look to the to the two uh, first categories, which are co-partners and associate partners, which I remember you are the most important, um, you have uh, first uh, uh, in, in, in both cases you have a. Uh, a number of annual activities which is uh, in, in limited. You can participate to, to, to an limited number of activities and you can lead an activity. When what I, I name this, 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 this kick activities, you can be a leader of the activity. Uh, for the co-partners there is there is no selling and funding. For the associate partners there is a, a selling of 300 uh, kilo euro per year. And uh, the uh, annual cash contribution, it means the fees you will have to pay annually to be a member of this uh, EIT raw material is of uh, 100 kilo euros for car partners and uh, 30 euros for associate partners. And you should also be able to bring this uh, complementary activities, uh, which is of 900 kilo euros for the co-partners and 300 kilo euros for the associate partners. I remember you that this, uh, that this uh, KCA, or oh, this CAVA, sorry, it, no, this uh, KCA contribution uh, is important to, to build up, to support uh, the projects you will present and for which you will be supported at 25% uh, in general. When we speak about activities of this EIT raw materials, you have uh, four types of activities. Uh, the first one in, in red is probably the most important when it relates to community. It is uh, to bring people together. Uh, we are organizing uh, match events, we are organizing ID camps, uh, entrepreneurship and facilitator activities. We probably will have something like uh, between 50 and 60 events this year at the EIT raw materials level to bring people together and to prepare them to have some new proposal. And that's it's really important. Uh, a second one in blue is concerning education and learning. So we can provide support for new master program, for new PhD program, uh, and we can also support uh, the uh, lifelong education as well as the wider society learning programs. When it comes to uh, tech transfer, I would say, to validation acceleration, we have two types of support. The first one is concerning the network of infrastructures. Uh, to make it simple, uh, all the partners uh, coming from the companies or coming from the research center, they have uh, facilities, they have uh, pilot plans, they have uh, uh, demonstrators. Uh, when, we can, when we bring all of this together for a specific uh, term or topics, we build up this kind of network of infrastructures. And this network is, uh, is, is open to the partners and they can have access to these different facilities. And uh, what is probably the most important in this uh, EIT raw materials if you look to the budget because it concerns probably 50% of the budget is the support to upscaling project. So what is upscaling? Um, to benefit from, uh, from funds concerning for an upscaling projects, uh, you have to bring the technology at a TRL level which is of five and uh, you will be supported to bring uh, from five to seven or eight. And uh, to give you some more information about uh, the funds you can have, for example, on the call which is uh, currently launched and which uh, uh, will be ended at the end of May. Um, for upscaling, you have three types of, of projects. You have the small projects, and then the contribution from the EIT raw material is uh, uh, 500 kilo euros. Uh, then you have the middle class, the middle uh, categories. Uh, it is between 1 and 2 million euros we will support. And then you have the large uh, category for large projects, large upscaling projects. And in this case, it's uh, between 3 and 5 million euros per project. If we go now to the uh, 
Central CLC, I told you it is located in, in Metz, and some of you may be wondering why it's in Metz, and I will show you the main reason why it's in Metz. Uh, first, because uh, we have a very nice school of engineers, which is the INIM, uh, which is quite new and which has a lot of facilities for uh, meetings, uh, conference room, uh, audio room, and so on. And that is it's very important when you have a community and we, when you have to organize a conference with uh, yes, 20, uh, 20, something uh, like 60 or 70 people together. Uh, also because if you look to a, a map, it is a map for example from Europe, you can see that uh, Metz is somewhere in the center of Europe, but it's also uh, at the border of Germany and France. And you know that the central CLC, its territory, its territory is Germany. And, and France. So it's very important for us to be very close to the partners uh, in France but also in, in Germany. If you look now to the uh, what we name the Lorraine region, or the former re region Lorraine, uh, you can see uh, on these different pictures that uh, there is a strong industrial tradition in Lorraine. Uh, you have, uh, of course, uh, mining, you have also uh, manufacturing, steel manufacturing. Uh, you have also a lot of industry related to uh, mobility. You have uh, 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 people building motors for vehicles, for these three cylinder motors for, uh, for PSR. Uh, you have energy, of course. Uh, and you have also, of course, in Lorraine, a very large forest uh, uh, with uh, wood. We can go to the, to the paper industry or to the, uh, to the uh, building industry, of course. And I told you, uh, yes, it was a former region, and now we have a new region which is even larger, which is the Grand Est region. I think it's a, it's a name which has been uh, published recently. And this uh, region is uh, now uh, a new region with, uh, on one side, Yalzas, uh, Lorraine, and uh, Champagne Ardennes. And it makes a, a very large region, which is uh, twice as large as Lorraine. Uh, with uh, 5.2 million inhabitants. Uh, I think it's larger than Belgium, to tell you. And um, if you look to what brings uh, these two new partners, on one side, yes, of course, you have the Champagne, uh, but it's not of interest today. But um, if you look to mobility, yes, there are many industries in Alsace which can bring some, uh, some partnership. You have the, uh, uh, the, the uh, TGV, you have Alstom, you have uh, uh, people uh, doing special trucks uh, to transport cars. Uh, you have uh, large companies uh, in the mobility industry like uh, PSA, Peugeot Citroën. And uh, we are very proud. We have also a very nice car, which is uh, this uh, Bugatti uh, Chiron, which is uh, produced in uh, near Strasbourg in, uh, in Molsheim. So we go from very large uh, car companies to very small and very expensive ones. So this is uh, where we are, and MESS is again in the middle of this uh, Grand Est region. And it's only also one reason why we are today in, in Metz. The other one is uh, that Metz is in the middle of the European Valley of Materials. And this uh, European Valley of Materials is a concept which solidifies in some way uh, the fact that there are many, many public and private uh, actors uh, along this valley and the center of this valley is, is Metz. I, I put here in the, on, the, on the green uh, square some uh, partners. You have the IRT M2P, I will speak about in a few moments. You have the CEA Tech, you have uh, Materialia, which is a, a pole of competitiveness, very close, which is in Metz. You have a Metafrench, which is in Metz. You have the Lafayette Institute, you have a very large uh, a research center like the Institut Jean Lamour, uh, which is in Nancy, close to Metz. You have the LEM3 in Metz. Uh, and you have also people uh, dealing with, uh, with uh, incubation as well as uh, support to, to, to spin-off and, uh, and, uh, and uh, startups, which is uh, Emertech, which is a venture capitalist company, and the incubator, Laurent. Um, if we look which are the partners regarding the activities I have shown we can have in, in this kick. 
I told you we can have matchmaking, we can have education, we can have validation, acceleration, we can have entrepreneurship. Uh, if we look to uh, partners which are close and which can bring some value to these uh, activities, we have, of course, uh, uh, Materia, which is a pole uh, of competitiveness, and we have also the Institute Carlo Isel, which are way near uh, to uh, the office in Metz. We have also uh, not so close, but not far away, the fiber in uh, the, the pole competitiveness, fiber inno energy, as well as the pole uh, vehicle du futur. Um, looking to uh, education and learning, we have a very big university uh, in Nancy, very close to Metz, with something like uh, 660,000 students and nearly uh, 4,000 academics. Uh, we have uh, two well-known uh, laboratory for materials, which is the Institute uh, uh, LEM3 first, and then we have also the Institute Jean Lamour. And if we look to, uh, to uh, resources, we have Othello, as well as the School of Geology, which is a Nancy. Looking at uh, validation of an acceleration, uh, one example is the IRT M2P, uh, which is located uh, in Metz, about uh, 100 meters from the uh, EIT raw material office, and which is uh, currently a task partner, but which will jump uh, end of this year to be an associate partner of the EIT raw material. If we look to business creation, we have also some uh, actors in the surrounding of Metz. We have the uh, Paul Entrepreneuriat Lorrain, uh, which is uh, a department of the University of Lorraine, and we have the Incubator Lorrain. Uh, uh, dealing which which is bringing some ideas into uh, startups, I would say, and which is also a good partner in the field of uh, raw materials. And then you have uh, Emertech and uh, Innovest, which can uh, invest uh, as uh, seed fundings as well as uh, venture capital. Innovest is uh, one of this uh, FNA. If we look to the background, uh, playground, sorry. Uh, I told you we are in France, we are also in, uh, in Germany, mainly South and uh, West Germany. And if we look now to the uh, current partners of the EIT raw materials uh, uh, central CLC, based in Metz, uh, you can see that we have uh, companies, uh, industrial partners, who are on the total uh, value chain of the raw materials and materials. <coughs> Uh, it starts with Eramet in uh, exploration mining, uh, with the BRGM also. Um, you have people doing dealing with uh, processing of raw materials. You have uh, Eramet, you have Eraus, uh, you have ArcelorMittal. Uh, we have two large uh, research and technology center, which are the, the CEA, as well as the Fraunhofer in Germany. And which looks to the uh, recycling we have, of course, uh, Suez Environnement. And uh, concerning education partners, we have two large universities, University de Lorraine, I spoke about, and the University de Bordeaux, as well as uh, INPG in Grenoble, and uh, TU Darmstadt uh, in Germany. And uh, end of this month, there should be a, a general assembly and we should have three new partners in this uh, central sales. <clears throat> when we look now to uh, the themes, the main themes we are interested in at central CLC, uh, we made a survey among our partners end of last year, and what comes out is that our partners are today mainly interested in three main topics. The first one is substitution of raw material, the other one is uh, the processing of resources, and the third one is the recycling of raw materials. And mainly uh, for the market of mobility and the one of energy. I told you that the uh, EIT raw material has been uh, built up end of uh, December 2014, and we had last year to, to build up uh, not only the organization, but also the activities. And I can tell you that uh, we were speed up by the EIT in general uh, to build up this very quickly and very fast 
to to get uh, to get the activity ready uh, in 2016. So first, if we look to the organization, uh, we have today uh, a, a, an association, which is in Germany, which is a Navy, and this association is uh, is 100 percent uh, into this uh, GmbH, and from this GmbH we have uh, created uh, six uh, different legal entity, and uh, Central CLC in France is a legal entity. It's an SRL which belongs at 100% to the GmbH. And the partners who are in this uh, CLC, central CLC, they can act by different ways. First, they are present at the steering committee. We have a steering committee at the central CLC every three months. They can also be active at the uh, general assembly. We have two assembly every year. And we have, an we have a, a representative at the executive board of the uh, EIT raw materials, uh, which is a uh, 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 representative, a director from ERAUS. And this is a third way uh, uh, the members can be present and can be active into this EIT raw materials. <coughs> I told you about organization, uh, legal entities, administration, and so on. Uh, we had also uh, calls last year for the different activities I presented you. Uh, we had calls concerning the network of infrastructures. Uh, we started it in April. We had one on education in May and a second one in, on education in July. Uh, we had also calls concerning events on uh, networking and matchmaking. And uh, at last but not least, we had also call concerning the upscaling activities. And uh, from this, it ended out that uh, concerning uh, learning education, uh, networking, and upscaling, uh, we will have, or we have this year, something like 80 projects which will be financed. And from them, we have 21 projects on uh, upscaling, which represents about something like 20 million euros. We have 27 projects on a network of infrastructures and uh, nearly 30 projects on learning and education. And all these projects uh, have made their kickoff uh, start of 2016, and they will run uh, this year, but mainly also next year. So I would uh, thank you for your attention and. Uh, I would also welcome you to join the uh, EIT Raw Materials and, uh, and to be a partner of this very nice and uh, very enthusiastic organization. Thank you.